Wondering how to get your blog page looking a little more on brand? If you've been feeling limited by Squarespace's built-in blog page options, then stay tuned because in this video, I'll be sharing a super simple hack for designing a brand new, completely custom and on-brand blog page for your Squarespace website, as well as a few other tips and ideas for what to include besides just your blog post preview content. But first, I'm genuinely super curious to know what it is you're working on in Squarespace. Is this blog for yourself or for a client? And what do you plan to blog about? Share with me, please, in the comments below. All right, so in the first video in this little Squarespace 7.1 blog series, we first added our blog to our website and then got our first few blog posts prepped and ready to go. And then in the second video, we talked about your options for editing your built-in blog page. Now you can find those videos here if you miss them. I'll also link them for you in the description below. But we haven't really touched on what else needs to live on your blog page or the sort of hacks to customizing it to better fit with the other pages built on your site. So let me grab my computer and then we will jump right in together. Squarespace wanted to make it super simple for you to display all your content without having to manually add a block to a page every single time a new post is published. But when it comes to your built-in blog section, you aren't able to drag, drop, add, and remove content like you are on a normal page. So while you can stick as many sections and block above and below your blog section as you want, this section is only ever going to display your blog post preview content in the order it was published. You aren't able to organize it into categories if you blog about more than just one thing. And there is also limits on how many previews will automatically display on your blog page. So if you're like me and you have hundreds of blog posts, your visitors will have to hit older to be able to scroll through the past content. This means visitors may never see some of your best content. So if you only plan to blog about one thing and only plan to have a handful of posts, or you just want Squarespace to do its thing and be one less thing for you to manage, then the built-in blog page is for you. But if you want more control over how your blog post preview content is displayed and organized, and you want to be able to put as much content on the page as you please, then this hack is for you. For this handy little workaround, we're actually going to add a new blank page and title it blog. You can rename your actual built-in blog page old blog layout if that helps you keep from getting the two mixed up. This old blog layout is going to be dragged and dropped into your unlinked section because we still want to be able to use all its content, we just don't want it appearing as our blog page in our main navigation anymore. Your new blog page will be what lives in your main navigation and what visitors see when they visit your blog instead. So once you're done building it, don't forget to drag and drop it into the main navigation section of your pages panel. The next thing we have to do is add our blog post preview content. We're going to do this by using summary blocks and having those summary blocks pull content from our actual blog. So add in your summary block. It doesn't matter which layout you choose because this can be edited once it's added. Then select the blog you want to display content from. Head under the layout tab and play around with the layouts and their spacing and text settings until you're liking the overall look of your blog summary section. I'm gonna go with carousel for now and I'm actually going to delete out this section header text so I can add in my own styled text block instead to keep things looking more on brand. Then I'm gonna head under my display tab. This is where the magic happens. So say I want my new blog page to be organized into different categories. So for my little pretend home and lifestyle blog, I want a carousel that shows up recent blog posts for my cleaning and tips category. In order to be able to display those posts here in the summary block, I would have already needed to add those categories to each post like we did in the first video in this series. So you can play around with how many posts you want displayed and what of your post preview text and metadata you want shown. But in order to only display certain posts, I'd have to scroll down here and start typing in specific category or tag or both if I want to get really specific with what I'm displaying. Once you have your first section looking the way you'd like it to, rather than having to add a new section and summary block and go through all those steps to tweak its settings, just duplicate your section and change the filters for which post to display. Then pop in your text box to create your section header and whatever other content you want to live on that section. So that is how you would organize your blog page into categories. If you're wondering why a post isn't showing up in a summary block where it's supposed to, it's probably because that post hasn't been properly categorized and therefore does not match the filter settings of your summary block. It's best practice to tag and categorize your blog posts as you create them so that you aren't having to go back and organize hundreds of posts down the road. Another way to customize your blog page is to organize your post thumbnails by date. 
This is similar to how the built-in blog page does things. Only you have to create titles or headers to break up the sections, and you aren't limited to how many can appear on a page. To do this, you want to make sure that your blog posts are tagged by month and year. Then just apply a new month's filter to each section you add to your page. Unlike organizing into categories, this method does require you to pop back in for a little blog page maintenance at the start of each month. I usually just set a task for the first of every month to go in, duplicate my section, and add my new month in the header, and change the display settings to match this new month. Okie dokes, now that you know how to use the summary blocks to display your post content, there's no end to how you can customize your blog page. This is just like any other page on your site, so you can add in whatever content in whatever order you please, and even use the section settings within each section to style your content. If you need help with learning how to add and style your content, I highly recommend checking out these videos. I'll pop a link to those in the description below. But when it comes to what else needs to be included on your blog page besides just your blog post previews, here's just a few ideas. Banner image and intro. This could be the first page visitors land on when they visit your site. So if it's their first time, you want to use this opportunity to create some brand recognition. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Categories or blog specific navigation. If you've chosen to organize by published date rather than by categories, your visitors will probably still appreciate it if you showed them around a bit. To create category links from text blocks, just type out your category name, hit that link button, open the little gear icon, and head under the page tab. Then search for your blog page. Add in the category you're making a link for, and voila! When someone opens that link, they will now be taken straight to a page full of posts in that category. Opt-ins and calls to action. Chances are your blog is more than just a hobby, and if you're going to put so much effort into creating all this fabulous content on the regular, then you're going to want a way to stay in touch with those people who may be interested in your paid offerings down the road. The best way to do this is to include clear call to actions throughout your blog page, inviting them to download your freebie, register for your free training, or even an invitation to work with you or shop online in your store. Blog sidebar. Your calls to action or categories can be their own sections as they scroll down the page, or even in a handy little sidebar. It's also a great place to include a little bio. If you need help creating a sidebar for your blog or any page on your Squarespace site without having to pay for a fancy plugin, you'll want to check out this video next. I'll also pop a link to that in the description below. A featured or trending post. If you have one particular post that tends to do really well and is a source of lots of email opt-ins, you may want to consider giving it its own section somewhere on the page. It's super helpful if someone is new to your business and doesn't know where to start, and also the easiest way to get readers hooked on your content. Need a little inspiration when it comes to the look and layout of your blog? Check out this post where I've rounded up the best Squarespace template inspiration and example sites just for bloggers. If you found this video helpful, be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. And for the best Squarespace tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe and tap that little bell icon to be notified of new content that drops on my channel every single week. Wondering what to check out next? Watch these videos too.